Okay, uh, so we'll be starting now. So for today, uh, we'll be going over the basics of React. So the goal for today is to learn how to write React and thinking in React. Uh, so the self-introduction. So my name is Ru Chao. I'm a year four NUS computer science student. So my first language is actually JavaScript, uh, which I picked up on my own during NS. Uh, I've been using React since 2018, and my hobby is rock climbing. So if anyone of y'all like to climb, uh, hit me up. All right. So, uh, so firstly, why should we learn React? Uh, yeah. So I think that's the that's the main like question that you should answer before you learn anything, so that you don't waste your time. So why should you learn React? It's because it's a programmatic way to create user interfaces. So as you know from uh, if you have joined the previous class on HTML and CSS, right? Like creating user interfaces uh, using like pure HTML is quite cumbersome because you will have to repeat yourself a lot of times. So with React, you can compose your user interface and um, it's just a way easier way to uh, write uh, UI code. Oh, and also it's an industry standard for UI development along with Vue.js and Angular. So if you're looking for a job, for front-end development, um, yeah, React is a good choice. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is you have to join, go to this link. Uh, you can assess it. Um, you can just check the, just check the chat and the link is inside for the Notion notes. Uh, or you can just head over to tinyurl.com slash hs dash React. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if everyone is in this link already, right? Can you all give me a thumbs up? Then I will just start when, yeah, when there's like at least like eight thumbs up, I guess. Okay, so all right, so the so the first thing you do is you click this link. Uh, this will open a project in your browser. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you head over to source and you head over to app.jsx. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So everyone here, please, can, can everyone give me a thumbs up once you're here? So uh, y'all will be, for today's tutorial, right? Y'all will be following me uh, to code out the uh, UI. It's just like a follow along. So you can just, uh, yeah. So if I'm too fast or too slow, uh, just let me know via the Zoom by using the, I think what, there's like an option to say that it's too fast or too slow. Yeah. Okay. And if any of you have any questions, right? Uh, just feel free to uh, speak up and ask me. Yeah, if like the participants offline too. All right, so, okay, let's get started. Okay. So first of all, you can see like you have this um, app.jsx. So JSX is basically JavaScript, but with, together with like the declarative language. So basically you can write your like sort of HTML stuff, right? Inside this um, file, yeah. And then when you change your the, the stuff here, it will automatically change on the right side. Yeah. So for example, right, uh, let me remove this paragraph. Can I say like, hello world? So as you can see, okay, maybe I put it on the H1. So it's easier to see. Hello world. Yeah, so as you can see, there's the UI changes automatically on the right. So how this works is basically when you change the, the stuff on the left, uh, the UI hot reloads and it gets rendered on the right side. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's, let's get started creating our first component. So, the, so how, how the components work in React, right? Is that each of the components is a function. So let me create like a, a, a new button called my button. So you create a function like this. So this is the standard JavaScript way of declaring a function. Uh, and it, not like a function, you got to return something. So what you need to return is a React component. So let's create a button. So you can use any of the HTML tag, 
uh, elements here. So what happens is when you create uh, the button in JSX, right? Like the button in JSX, what will happen is that uh, the React Engine right, will render a HTML on the side uh, with the data you declare here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's call this I am a button. Yeah. So now we created our first button. We want to we want to display this button. So how do we display it, right? It's by placing this button inside the app component. So it's so React is primarily a composition kind of uh, programming methodology, right? So what we are doing is we create a my button here and then we put it inside app. Okay, so let's let's uh check it. let's do this. Okay, uh, let's put it under the the other button. Okay, you know what? Actually, let's remove the other button. Yeah, so and let's put our button there. Okay. Okay, uh, so you see there's a I am a button over here. Uh, has, if everyone is at this step already, uh, can, uh, can let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you realize, right, you see this is a, my button function, right? In order for the button to show up, right, you got to like put it in the angle bracket and close it with this uh, slash angle bracket. So this basically is the same as uh, saying this. Yeah, it's just like a short form. Yeah, because it's like slightly less thing to read. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now you have your button created. Um, all right. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, right? Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, now we have our button rendered, right? Now we want to have the button to. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If anyone is stuck, right, and just let me know. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So let's see the chat. If if anyone has any problems, right, just a uh, message on the chat, or you can like raise your hand or something. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I'll just continue. Uh. Okay. So basically, now you have the UI, right? Uh. Let's say you want to, uh, change the styles of the button, right? Like right now it's a black button. Uh, let's say you want a blue button, right? What you do is you just go to the CSS file and you edit the styles. So if you open the site bar, you see that there's a app.css. Oh wait. Yeah, rest my thing is a bit shaky. Okay, so there's an app.css. So you go over here. Uh over here, what you can do, right, is uh you can create a class. A CSS class so that you can style uh, this my button. Yeah. So uh hey, let's create a class called uh, dot button. Uh let's say we want to change it to a blue background, right? So we put blue background, background as blue. Okay. Okay, now now you see it's not showing up yet, right? So what you have to do is you have to add the class name into the into the button. So what I like to do usually is I, I can I like to open it so I can see both the CSS and the and the JSX code. So what we do is we add class name equals to uh button. Yeah so you see now this button becomes blue. Uh wait uh, I think it's loading Give me a sec. This zoom thing is a bit laggy. Okay, yeah. So the button becomes blue. So basically, uh, you're gonna declare a CSS class. You just add it into this thing called a prop, uh, called class name. Then you put a button here. Then you put a name here, like button. And then you declare the CSS uh, as per usual inside the CSS file. 
Yeah, so if you want to add a, a little bit more class names, right, you could too. So let's say we have another, let's say we want to make this, the border of this button um, white. So let's maybe create a CSS class called border white. So let's do this, two pixel solid white. Then what we want to do is we just have to add a space and then border dash white. Then this uh, CSS class will be applied to this button. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if everyone is good, can y'all give me a thumbs up? Then I'll move along. Otherwise, uh, you can ask me any questions. Okay, two thumbs up, three thumbs up. Okay, uh, is there any, anyone stuck? Uh, if you're stuck, right, uh, you can raise your hand. Okay, nobody, right? Okay, so uh, I'll just move along. Okay, so now we are done with the basic rendering of the element and styling it. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, tap into the real like power of React, which is uh, it allows us to manage state uh, very easily. So, um, okay, let's, so what we're going to do is we want to basically, when we click the blue button, right? When you click this blue button, we want the button to change to uh, green, yeah. So when you click this button, this button should change to a green color, yeah. So let's do this. So what we need to do is we need to first import the use state function, which is actually already imported. Yeah. And then we declare a um, use state. Wait. Okay. Yeah, you want to declare like a use state statement. So how it works is okay. on uh let's say button color set button color equals to use state. Uh, let's say at the side is blue. Yeah. Okay, so basically what we are doing here, right? Okay, what we are doing here is that uh, we are calling the use state function and then the use state function, right, will return an array called uh, basically this array and then it will and then what we do here when we do like angle bracket and close angle bracket right what we're doing is we are destructuring the array into two different uh, variables actually right for this one if you don't exactly understand how it works right the how the destructuring works it doesn't matter you just have to uh follow this uh line yeah it's kind of like a standard so uh you just follow this thing like if you want to know more about how the javascript uh, the structuring works, you can check out the documents next time. Yeah. So just copy this line first. Okay. So okay, I give everyone like three seconds and I'll move along. Okay. Okay, now now we now we have this this right. So uh what happens now right is that the button color by default right will be blue. Yeah. So uh yeah the so button color by default will be blue so if let's say you want to see the the text of the of this this right uh we can just wrap it in like curly braces okay, actually you know what I'm, i should do this i'm a blue button, button color. yeah so we wrap it in this curly brace so when you wrap it in the curly brace right whatever is uh inside the text here right will be shown um in on the UI. Yeah. So if let's say we change this to like green, right? And then it will be I'm a green button. Yeah. So basically uh what happens is uh the default value of button color will be blue. And then unless you use the set button color to set it to another color, right? Uh it will always be blue. Yeah. Okay. So now now the thing is uh we have our the blue thing is showing up on the button, right? 
the text itself is showing up on the button. But the color doesn't, is it, is it, is it actually like, um, it, it doesn't actually tell you the color of the button because it's not like a CSS class, right? So what we do is um, we could uh, create another, comp another prop called style. So style is basically an uh, inline style. So you declare the style. Yeah, yeah, there's a question on the chat. So does it auto hot reload on every save? My button is not showing up. I just added the button function code in the CSS. Yeah, so actually this editor, right? Like this stack blitz editor, it hot reloads without you even saving. So whatever you type, right? It will automatically update on the right side. So I think the reason why your button is not showing up, right? Is uh, maybe because you didn't declare the button component. So just now we have the my button. So your inside your cut here, you should have the angle bracket my button slash close bracket. Yeah. Uh, for Samuel, is it working? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, all right. So okay, let's go back to my button, right? Okay. So uh, what we can do here. So you can set the background to the button color. Actually, we don't need this thing. Okay. You set the background to the button color. So let's see if it actually changes color when we change the default state. So let's say you change it to green. Oh, yes, it's becoming green. Okay. So you change to red, right? Then you'll become red. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to blue again. So now what you want to do is. Okay, is, that, has everyone, is everyone at this stage already? Whereby you change the text in the use state, right? You change the button color correspondingly. Actually, the people offline, you're, are you following? All good, all good. Okay, so, okay, uh, can you all give me a thumbs up if you're like at this stage? Already? Otherwise, uh, I could help to debug. Because I think if you, I already like if you miss the first part, right? It's quite hard to follow afterwards. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'll continue. Uh, just let me know. Okay. Uh. Okay. So I'll continue. So the next step is um. We want to change the button color to green, on click. So what we do is we assess the on click prop. Okay, by the way, as you can see, right, uh, the good thing about React is uh, all the types are already declared. So when you type, right, type in the property, it will be, um, it will be there will be an autocomplete. Yeah. So you don't really have to remember exactly the, the prop names and the all the names. Yeah. So it saves a lot on your memory. Okay. So what we want to do is we create this on this on click, right? We add this curly brace. And in the curly brace, we put in this arrow function. So basically, a uh, curl bracket, what is it? Sorry, round bracket, round bracket, arrow, and then um, curly bracket. So this one is like equal signs and a uh, right angle bracket. Uh, yeah, for Raymond, yeah, the, the session is recorded. Yeah, is it recorded, right? Yeah, the section is recorded. You can watch it later. Yeah. Okay, so uh let's see let's take something wrong. Uh okay, well by the way, right? Uh if you see like the document right now is a bit like ugly. Like what you if you want to like format it properly, right? If you see this P button, you click this P button and then you'll be formatted nicely. Yeah. I think if you change the file directly, it should also format nicely. Uh Oh yeah, if you save the file, you should auto format it. Yeah. Okay. Uh okay. So 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 has everyone created a function? So if everyone has created a function, uh what you do next, right? Is inside this function, you will call the set button color function to your desired color. So what we do is we call set button color and bracket bracket. And let's say we say that screen. Okay. So what happens now is when you click, you do on click, right? You'll set the button color. 
And then this button color variable will be changed to green. And then uh, the background so will change to green. Yeah, so let's try it. Yay, okay, so now it becomes a blue button. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you want to reset it back to the, uh, sorry, now it becomes a green button. If you want to reset the UI back to the blue button, right? You just click this refresh and it will render this and clear the state. Oops, sorry, clicked the wrong thing. Okay, so what happens over here, right? If you are interested in the internals. Okay, by the way, you don't have to know about the internals to know how to use React, but it's like a good to know. So if you are interested in knowing how the internals work, right? Basically, it's uh when the state changes, right? The the function or uh, what the what the React engine will do when the state changes is the red engine will compare like the old state and the new state. So once it finds that the state has changed, uh, it will re-render the component in HTML. Yeah. So the React engine will settle the re-rendering for you. So every time you change like a color or prop or anything, right, the whole thing will re-render. Like I mean the 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 particular component will re-render and then uh it will change. Yeah. Okay, so now we are done with this. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Do you mind showing the button part in function app again? Yeah. Actually, uh, what about right? I can just copy my function over and I'll paste it in the chat. Yeah. It's okay to just copy paste at the start. Like, I think, oh, the, not the bottom, the, the, not the right, not the top part, the bottom part. Oh, okay. Let me just copy paste my entire file over. So in case anyone is like lost, right? You can just copy paste my thing. Why can't I copy paste? Oh wait, I think Zoom has a, like a text limit. Uh, that way to share this. Oh, okay, what about I put it inside the, oh wait, there's a share button on oh, cool. Okay, I copy my stack blitz URL, right? And then you can take you guys can take a look. So if let's say you are like not following, right? You can just go into my one and just edit directly from my or yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can go to my link and copy the, the stuff and then paste in yours if you're not following. Yeah. All right. Uh, is everyone uh at the same stage as me? If everyone's good, y'all can give me like a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh okay, so now we have this. Okay, so the next now we have the state part, right? Okay. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh the next part. Oh it doesn't work. Let me Oh it's a... Oh, I know why, because I didn't say. <laughs> okay, let's try the new one. Oh, works now, nice. Okay, I guess I have to save it. So I didn't save just now. All right, thank you so much. So now we are at uh the button colors right okay so now we are done with this let's move on to the next one so the next one we are do is um let me see uh, okay next one let's let's do conditional rendering okay so what is conditional rendering uh very simply right it's like uh if, if else statement so if x then render this if y then render something else so one, one part where you need to use this 
you might need to use this is uh maybe when you are like uh let's say when the user is locked in right you want to show like a login button then when the user is not locked in sorry when the user is not locked in you want to show the login button when the user is locked in you want to hide the login button yeah okay so let's do that okay so i am uh, locked in button so now we have this I am a blue login button, right? Okay, so right now the uh, user is not locked in. So you want to do like when you lock in, right? You want to make the button disappear. Yeah. Okay, so how we can do that? So let's first let me see. Okay, okay let's first uh remove the button color props first. Okay, actually, you know what? Let me do this in another button so that uh, we can see we, this thing will still exist. So let's create another button. So uh, in the meantime, with this, you can revise your uh, how to create a new component. Okay, so, so basically, uh, I'll create a login button. And the login button will return a button. And the button will be called Locked in. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Okay, yeah. So we call locked in. Locked in, okay. And then let's put the locked in button underneath my button. Oh, yeah, actually, let's put it like this is a bit ugly. Let's put it here. Yeah, we put it underneath the card. Okay, you can see the login button, right? Yeah, I, I will save. So, if you're not following, right, you can just go to the link that I sent on the Zoom chat and copy paste the code. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the login button. Okay, so is everyone following? Uh, thumbs up, thumbs up, if yes. Oh, actually, right, if you want to unmute and just talk, right? Uh, feel free. All right, nice. Okay. All right, so now we have the login button. So what I want to do is when you click the login button, right, you want to uh, hide the button. Okay, so what we can do here is Let's do the same thing again. So the, the React state thing. Okay, you know what? Like for like a to make it easier, right? You can just copy paste from the top. Yeah. So and then for the button color, instead of using button color, you can change it to um, show button. Show button. So set show button. So by default, right? We want uh show button to be true. Because we are showing the button. So we put true inside this new state. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is if you want to hide the button when show button is false, right? What you can do is uh so if show button, then we let me do it normally. Then we return locked in. Uh, else we return uh, uh we return like now. Yeah. So now it just means nothing. Yeah. So uh, if we return now, then there'll be nothing. Okay. So now we have this. So if show button, we return the login button. Else we return nothing. All right. So. Yeah, so by when you click it, there's nothing happening because uh, we are not calling the set show button yet. So if everyone is at this stage, uh, you can give me a thumbs up. Let me just save it again. So if you want to copy paste, you can just uh, go to the link I sent in the chat and copy paste the code. Okay, so thumbs up. All right, okay, so let's continue. So uh, now let's go to the on-click prop again, okay? So let's uh, add an on-click prop. 
and create the function. So the empty arrow function. Same as above. Yeah. And then what you want to do is instead of this button, when you click login, right? We want to hide the login button. So what we do is we call set show button. And then we set it as false. Let me show it here. Okay, yeah. We set it as false when you click the button. So let's click the button. Oh, okay, it disappeared. Yeah, you can click the refresh to make it appear again. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh the conditional logic. So if show button is true, then we return the button, else we return nothing. So if because we return nothing, uh nothing will be rendered in the user interface. Yeah. So this is how conditional rendering works. Okay, let me just add the command. So for reference, next time you can check it out. Uh, set state change. Okay, so actually, yeah, uh, like this is like almost like uh, around thirty to forty percent of around thirty percent of uh all the features that React React has, yeah. Uh, yeah. So actually, you just have to master the use state, and like kind of know about like the different props, right? Then you can, uh, yeah, like almost there with using all the features of React. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, let's do like a let's render like a list. Okay. Oh, where's my login button? Let me refresh. Okay. See. You. Okay, so let's render a list uh, with React. So, okay, so let's let's do it, okay? So uh, let's first declare a list. Like maybe uh, let's call the list my favorite, uh, okay, my favorite fruits. Okay, so my favorite fruits in this array format. And then the interface of the list, Basically, the, the how the list is structured, right? Let's do it like uh, name of the fruit, uh, followed by the let me think about it, color of the fruit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do this. So let's have name. Uh, say apple, and color of the apple is uh red, right? So we have this. Okay, so we have this. Yeah. So this is the fruit. The first fruit is apple. Let's add a few more fruits. Uh, let's say we have uh orange. 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 Uh, another fruit is mango. Mango is yellow, right? Uh, let's think of what else. Uh, durian, durian is green. Yeah. Okay. So now we have this. Uh, what we want to do is we want to um render the list as a list as a HTML list inside this hello world thing. Yeah. Okay. So what we do again is let me just declare the what we are doing here. Rendering list. Okay, so what I want to do again is we want to declare another component called fruit list. Uh, okay, so yeah, so for the start we could return like a return now. First. Yeah. So now we have the fruit. Okay, let's okay, you know what? Let's return something first. Uh, let's return like a empty list. So, uh, if you remember right, or uh, like let's if you okay basically this this is the HTML tag for a list the start of a list it's ul, and then the item inside the list right will be li so let's put hello inside first. Okay. Okay, so let's render the fruit list, uh, somewhere. Okay, let's put it like here. So what I do is, fruit list with the close brackets. 
Yeah. So as you can see, right, you can see the hello, the dot and the hello here. So this is a list in the item. Yeah, actually it's not really elegant. Let me see if I can put in a card, it look nicer. Oh, it doesn't look nicer. Okay, never mind. I'll just put it in the same place. Okay, so now, now we have this hello, right? This is inside the list, right? All right. Oh, actually, you know what? Like the React and the Vit logos are really ugly. I mean, not, it's like really glaring. Let's remove it. Okay, so now we just have hello. World. So you can see the list, the hello. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to render the my fruits list inside the fruit list. Okay, so let's do it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create the curly braces. Yeah. And then next you type in my fruit list. And then what you do, right, is you do a map. So you map each of these JavaScript objects into a React component. Yeah. So so if, for those who don't know, right, like the JavaScript list uh has a okay, I think it's called array in the JavaScript. So the JavaScript array has a has a function attached to it called map. So you can just do like dot map and fruit and then uh, the arrow bracket and then you will uh, do a curly brace and you do return. So this will return uh, the items. Yeah, you can return, a, you can return like a HTML element so, or in this case it's a JSX element. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to return the li, so like this. So let's put test first. Yeah. So because we have uh four fruits, right? We will return the four tests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think this part might be a bit challenging. So if you are not following, right? Uh, let me save it again. Yeah. Just go to the chat and just copy paste the same code. Yeah. Uh, if everyone's at this stage, right? Uh, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Or if you have some programming experience, uh, this makes a lot of a sense. Yeah. Okay. So now let's continue. Now we have the 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 test, 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 right? But what you want to do is you want to render the fruits, right? So what we do is we can extract out the properties in the fruit. So because the so the fruit has this thing called name and this thing called color, right? We can extract it out. So we extract out fruit.name. So when we extract out the fruit.name, right, it will be rendered in the list. Yeah. Okay. So uh can y'all see it? Everyone good? Can y'all see your apple, orange, and mango? Yes. All right, nice. Okay, so let's. The next step, what we want to do, right, is we want to um, we want the text to be in the corresponding color of the fruits, yeah. So let's do the inline styling again. So style, so curly brace inside is another curly brace. So it's an object in the in the prop. Yeah, okay, let's also format this. It's a bit ugly now. Oh, it, oh, it moves back. Okay, so. So let, let's go uh, have a property called background and then let's put a color inside. Okay, sorry, it must be fruit.color. Yeah, fruit.color. Oh, okay, actually, you know, background is a bit ugly. Let's call it, let's use the color property. Color will change the color of the text. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the apple, orange, uh, mango, and durian. Yeah, mango still, okay. Okay, later we can add one more item called mango Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there'll be a pride flag. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, it's almost like a pride flag. Nice. Okay, let's just add all the colors such that we have the pride flag. Okay, so so have have you guys uh sorry, have you have you all gotten like the 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 least at this current stage? Let me save it. Yeah, I saved it. So if you have any problem, uh, you can go and uh, copy paste my link. Yeah. So the next next part, let's let's do the pride flag. Okay. So let's add the colors of the pride flag. Yeah. So make sure you don't miss out this because I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, everyone good? Can you all give me a thumbs up? Blueberry and mango stain, yeah, correct. Okay, so now let's add blueberry and mango stain so that you have a rainbow, okay? Wow, this is such a coincidence. So now we have another durian. Let's change this to uh, blue. Blueberry is connected, right? Yeah. Is it it's, okay, it's connected, right? Yeah, okay, so blue. Uh and then uh let's add mango skin. Yeah. So purple. Yeah, so now we have the uh, the rainbow color. Yeah. Actually, no what let, let's make it like a black, right? So let's change it to the background. Okay, let, let, let's first change the color back. The color, the food, instead of setting a color to the food color, right? let's change it to white. Okay, so let's change it to white. Okay, and then let's add in the fruit color as the background of each item so that we can get a rainbow. Uh, fruit dot color. Oh, yes, yeah, all good, all good, all good. Okay, so now we have the rainbow flag up. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me save it. So if you are not following, you can just head over and copy what, uh, what I've done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is everyone good? Uh, if you are good, you can give me a thumbs up if you are at the same stage as me. Okay, all right. So the next thing, right, there's one very important thing that we are missing in this uh, rendering of a list, right, which is, so React requires you to pass in a key property. Yeah, so this key property is actually not like uh, rendered in the user interface, but it is very important. So uh, let's just put in the key property as name first. Yeah, so uh, the, for the key property, right, what you want to be inside the key property, right, is something that is unique. So like in this case, I would say like the name of the fruit will be unique. So you pass in the name of the fruit as a key. Uh, you might not want to put in the color as, uh, as you might not want to put in the color as a key because uh, the color might not be unique, right? So like, let's say you add another fruit that is uh, green, like, Honeydew, right? I think honeydew is green. Yeah, like honeydew is green, right? Then there will be uh duplicates of the color. Yeah. So yeah, so this is so you have to put in a key. So now the why do you have to put in a key, right? The reason is because uh React relies on the key to understand what is uh rendered when they do the comparison. So if let's say your key is like uh reused, right? Uh, let's say you remove one of the items programmatically using the set state, uh, the React engine will be confused and then there might be some front end bugs. Yeah. So actually this part, right, is, I, I think it's a little bit advanced. Uh, just trust me on this. So when you're rendering a list, right, make sure you add in the key prop and put in a unique value. Yeah. I think most of the times you don't really have to know how it works in the background. Uh, you just have to follow the... <laughs> The, the conventions, yeah. But if you're curious, you can go and check it out. Yeah, it definitely helps if you understand the reasoning behind some of the conventions. Yeah. All right. So now we have the uh, we have the flag up. Now let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so next part, right? Let's do something. Uh, yeah. Let me let me let me save this. Okay. Yeah. So if if you are following, right? Uh, I saved it. So you can go to the my code link to copy and paste again. Okay. Wait. There's a question from uh, I, Tran, Tran, right? So I'm curious what about the slash in this syntax fruit list? What does it mean? Okay. So actually, right? You know, like. HTML has this open tag and the closed tag, right? So actually, what this slash means, right? The open fruit list slash 
tools, right? What it means is it's just a shorthand. It's a shorthand, so it's a shortcut. It's a shortcut for like the open and close like this. It's the same thing. It's just that uh like no people get lazy and they don't want to type so many things. So React added this feature whereby you can uh use the shorthand. Yeah. So you don't have to type in the same thing twice. Yeah. Okay, uh sorry, my, my internet is like a bit down. It's like connecting again. Uh okay. So share. Okay, it's connected. Right. Yeah. So so actually it's the same thing. Uh uh, uh Chuan, did I, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, just wonder why. Then, uh, yeah. okay, you send a reply or something. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh shall we move on to the next part? If everyone's good, you can give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, oh yeah, I'm just querying for the thumbs up. Yeah. All right, so three, oh yeah, like a bit more, come on. Uh, if, if you are not like following, right, uh, just go to my link and just copy paste the same thing. Yeah, make sure you are, you are at the same state as me. Because if you are at a different state, right, it will be very hard to follow. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, let's go. So the next thing we want to learn is uh, props. So let's, next thing we want to learn is props. So props are basically this, you see right, they have this key thing, like this is a property, yeah. So for our own components, we can create a prop tool. So uh, let's take a look, okay. So let's say the, okay, let's create another component so that we don't like overwrite this. Uh, let's create another component called, um, let me see, let's think about a good name. Uh, Okay, let's let's create a component that describes your mood for today. So let's call it mood. Okay, so yeah, I'm sure everyone is very happy because you are attending this lesson, right? So let's put a default as happy. Okay, so this is the mood component. Okay, let's render the mood component somewhere. Uh, okay. Let's render the mood component. Let's put it and above the flag. Okay, no, actually, like let's put it. Let's replace hello world and and render our mood. Oh yeah, maybe you can change this to a H one text. Yeah. So we have a mood function and it returns a H one happy. Okay. So everyone's following. Let's go on and add the mood component in. Okay. Uh, okay, so are you all at this happy flag? If everyone's good, then uh, let me know and give a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. So we create a function mood and you add it in uh, this like uh, tag mood and you put it inside the uh, line 77. Uh, okay, can you have some thumb thumbs up? Okay, nice. Okay, okay, nice. Okay, okay. So let's continue. Okay, so now now we have like happy, right? But like you might not be happy every day, right? So, uh, let's say you want to change the text of the happy. Uh, one way you can do it is you can do like here, like set over here. But as you can see, right now we are modifying the mood function itself. Yeah. So if let's say you want to reuse the function somewhere else, right? Let's say you have like two moods, happy, happy, right? Like we want the first text to show happy, the second text to show sad, right? But we still want to use the same component. So uh that would be very um like you, you have to like either create two two one more component or yeah, or like it's just like a bit hard to do, right? So let's say you want to have two different modes, right? So what we can do is we can pass in a like a property. So let's call the property text, right? Let me think about it. Let's call it mood. Yeah. Okay, just let's just call it mood. Okay. So we will basically put this curly curly brace and put a mood here. And then what we do over here is we'll 
pass in the property. So this is kind of like calling a function. I mean, it is actually calling a function, just that the syntax is made in a way such that it's easier to write. So let's put a mood as um, happy for the first one. Actually, you can, you can do this stuff, number string. And the second one, let's put it as mood equals to sad. Yeah. So if you want to add more, right, you just like uh, mood related, uh, mood, uh, what are the moods are Angry. Like, let's not do angry. Uh, uh, tired. Okay. Yeah, so you have like all these different things. Yeah, so we have the the different moods. We can just put it as the argument. Yeah. So if everyone's is everyone following? So if you are following, can you give me a thumbs up? Uh, if you're not, you can go over to the link. Let me just copy the link again, right? Because it's like bump down. Let me paste it again. Yeah, you can go to the link and just copy the same code and paste it in your editor. <clears throat> Okay, so um, yeah, everyone's following. Okay, so now let's move on. So let's combine like uh, all this stuff that you have learned. So what you have learned, let's do a recap. You have did like a set state change color. So uh, the output is like this. You, you click the blue button and become green. And then we have also learned uh, conditional rendering. So when you click the button, the button will disappear, right? Because we set show button equals to false. So let's click lock in. Oh, disappears. Uh, we have also learned like a rendering of list. So when you render a list, uh, you have to pass in the key property, and then you have to do this dot map to render the list, and you can pass in the property of the each item. Yeah. So you can see this beautiful flag over here. Okay, and then the last one you have learned is uh props. Okay, let me let me tag this also. Uh, props. Props. Custom props. Yeah, custom props. Yeah. So we have the happy, sad, related, and tired. Okay, so now we have all these things, right? Uh, let's maybe try to combine everything into one. Uh, one one. I combine everything right into one component to show you how we can use all uh four things we have learned at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so uh so like yeah, so I think this part might be a bit messy. So uh if you're not following it, me, please uh copy the code. Yeah. Okay, so uh if everyone's ready, then you can give me a thumbs up, then we'll get started. Uh, thumbs up, please, thumbs up, please. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, now we got a thumbs up. Okay, so now, now let's say, let's think about what we want to build, okay? Uh, okay, so let's do something like, um, okay, let me, let me write out in the comment first of what we're going to build. Then we can uh, think of how we're going to build it. So usually what happens is, uh, the, the, if you are like a software engineer, like front-end developer working in a like, company, Right. Uh, basically, what people will do is they will give you like a Figma link, and then you have to design the user interface. Yeah. So okay, let you don't have a Figma link. Figma is basically like a like a design mockup, lah. So we don't have the Figma link or something right now. So let's maybe do like a mockup via like text, plain text. Okay. Okay. So let's think about what, what we want to do. So I think what we want to do is we want to render a list. Of uh, uh, so we have the. I think we can do like the fruits thing again. Yeah, so we run the list of list of fruits. Yeah, but this time right, the list of fruits right. Uh, we want it to be uh dynamic, right? Okay. So wait, wait, my thing working. Okay, sorry, I'm like disconnected again. So give me a second. Yeah, it's uh disconnected. So, okay, so let me just continue to describe, right? So we want to render a list of fruits. And then what happens is when you click the uh when you click the the fruit, right? 
when you click the fruit, the fruit should disappear. Yeah. And then we want this component to be uh, reusable. Yeah. Okay, actually, you know what? Not just running a list of fruits. It's just running a list of things of different color. And we want it to be reusable. Yeah, so let's do it. Okay, so uh, render a dynamic list. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so the list shop, right? Is the same as the the flag, right? So it's oops. so it's basically name string followed by color string. Uh, let's do this. So <clears throat> we have the name and the color, right? So let's create a function. So let's call the function uh dynamic color list. Let's call the function color list. Color lists. And then this uh this color list right will accept a property called item. Okay, and then the 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 items right will be an array of name and color. Yeah. And then what you want to do is you want to return the same thing. We want to return a list of uh items. Oops. Uh, L I L I. Okay, let's put a test first. Yeah, we want to re return a list of items. Okay, uh, let's try to render the color list and see if it works. Okay, let me remove this. So all the modes. Let's just leave the happy there. Okay, so let's have a color list. Okay, now the test. This one is the color list, uh, the test is the color list. Okay, so uh, actually, you know what? Let me just comment on the fruit list because it might be confusing to some. Yeah, so now we have back to the back to square one, right? Okay, let's save. Yeah, uh, and at this point, you're not following me, you can just go and copy my code in the tag list. Yeah. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to do the same thing as the Fruit list, which is to map out the items into a list. So let's do this. Okay. Actually, let me think. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we should put in a prop first. So the color list, let's put in a prop of items. So the prop of items is the. Let's just add, copy this array over. Okay, actually, you know what? We can just do my favorite fruits here. For the for the items, you just type in my favorite fruits as a prop. Yeah. So uh yeah, let's see. Yeah, it might it might be a bit confusing at this point. Uh yeah, if, if you're not following, you can just let me know. Yeah. Okay, so now what we do is we want to map out the, the items. So items dot map uh item oops, and then pass in the arrow function and then return a list of items. Uh, and then the we will display the item name, and then the style, the color of the item will be the color specified. Same as what we did in the fruit list. Yeah, we could just we could just copy from above like, and just change the name. And then remember to add in the key. The key has to be unique, so we put in the item dot name. Yeah. Oh wait. Well, let's change the do the same thing as just now. So color is white. And background is item dot color. Okay. Yeah, so we have this. So the, the only difference between color list and fruit list, right? Is for fruit list, right? We are using this constant on top and we are mapping it out. But for color list, right, it's dynamic. What we do is we have a items prop and then we can accept different type of uh items. Yeah. Uh, so if you are following, you can uh, let me know with a thumbs up. Yeah, if you're not following, you can go over to the the link that I sent and copy paste. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can everyone give me a thumbs up before I move along? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. 
Okay, so let's continue. All good, all good. Okay. Yeah, if, if you're not following this part, you can just uh just uh copy the same code. Lah. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> um now we have the color list. So uh what you want to do, right, is uh let me think uh what you want to do. So what you want to do is we want to when you click the apple, right? I want the apple to disappear. When I click the orange, I want the orange to disappear. So when I click something, right, I want it to disappear. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. So let's say you want to do that, right? Uh how can we do it? Uh yeah, so so what you want to do is you want to when you click the item, you want it to disappear. Yeah. Okay, so what we can do is let's create another use state. Okay, sorry, there's one more restriction. So the one more restriction is that oh you don't want the state to be in color list. You want the state to be handled in app. Okay. So it cannot be used in color list. So okay, so what you want to do is you want to create a new use state in app. Okay. So okay actually this one we are not using anymore. We can remove it. So let's create a new use state. So uh Items that items equals the use state. So items is a array, and and this is the default state. The default state is an empty array. So let's say you want the default state to be uh my favorite fruits, right? And then uh let's put it here. Default state will be my favorite fruits. So so right now items is equals to my favorite fruits. So we want to render the render the items. So let's put it here. Yeah. Uh okay. So now as you can see, since we pass the micro foods as a default state, and items is equal to the default state at the start, we didn't cause that items, right? And then we are rendering the items. So therefore the, the items in micro foods will be rendered same as previously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is everyone at this part? Let me save. Oh, actually I should have to think of how to hide the thing. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I need to overwrite the entire uh let me think about it. Oh, this is a bad idea to do this. <laughs> um click. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, you can do that also. Yeah. Okay, so everyone at this this stage. Okay, if everyone is here, right? Uh, what we can do is, okay, let let's let's do the. I think we can still do the hiding of the list. Yeah. So let's let's do the hiding item, hiding uh hiding of the the color color list item, right? Okay. So okay, the other thing we are doing here is might be a little bit advanced, but we'll still be using the same concepts we have learned uh from previously. Okay. So uh what we want to do, right, is uh okay, so we want to create a prop code on item click. Okay, so and, and on on item click right, uh, will be a function, right, and then uh, so so now you have a prop right, so it should be this thing. So on item click is a function. It's a custom function prop that we have created for Kali's. Okay, so let me see. So uh, this part might be a bit more advanced. So if you're not following, uh, it's okay. Just copy paste the same thing. Okay, so now, right, what you want to do is when you click the list, you want it to disappear, right? Okay, so what, what our plan, right, is basically, right, okay, here's, our, here's our plan, here's our plan. So on item, so our plan is basically we have the list item. Okay, the list item, when you click the list, right, uh, we will call the on item click function. 
And the on item plate function, right, will accept an argument, which is the name of the item. So the item dot name, right? So when you click the item, when you click the item, when you click the item, right? Uh, we will call the on item plate with the item dot name, uh, argument, right? So yeah. So what happens is, on top or on the app component, right? You'll be able to receive the item name. Yeah, so you get the item name. And then in on the, on the app component, once we get the item name, we will uh hide the item based on the item name. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So I will just write some comments and if you don't understand, right, you can just uh uh you can just look at the comments. Yeah. So actually what I want, I want to do first is I want to do the let me think about it. Yeah, I want to do the top part first. We'll go from top down. Okay. So let's assume we get the item name, right? And we want to hide the item. So how do we do that? So how we do that is uh basically uh we want to filter out the the item that is even, right? So what we do is we really do items of filter. Item. So we want to filter out the item that is clicked, right? So what you do is uh filter item dot name is not equals to the item name. So what this function will do is it will take the items and then look through and check that the name is not equal to the item name passed to us, right? So if let's say you click Apple, right? And what happened is the item name will be Apple. So Apple will be passed to us. So now we check that uh, all the items over here, we will check that if it's uh, not equals to Apple, uh, we will render out this filter items. Okay, so the expected, if let's say we click Apple, right, the expected one should be orange, uh, mango, durian, blueberry, and mango seed. Yeah. Okay, so now we have all the items, right? Uh, yeah, and then what you want to do is, you want to set the items as the filter items. So set items, filter items. So this is what you want to do. So what this will do is, when you click this, the item will disappear. Okay, let's prettify it and then let's see. So if you are not following, uh just go over to my uh editor link and just copy paste. Yeah. Okay, so now, now, now let's move on to the next part. So the next part is you want to pass in the item name when you click the this item. Okay, so basically over here we will have an on-click prop and then Okay, now we have this, right? So what we'll do now is we'll call the on item click function with the item name so that we can receive it over here. Yeah. So on item click, then we pass in the item dot name. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So now, right, uh, if everything is okay, I mean, if I didn't make any mistakes, right? When you click the item, it should disappear. Yeah. Okay, that's a uh, moment of truth. Let's click. Oh, yes, it disappeared. Awesome. Okay, it disappeared. Yes. Very good, very good. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, so uh, if I, is there a, I just want to do a quick check, right? Is, uh, who is able to follow until here? Like, without, like, uh, copy-pasting or anything? Uh, you can give me a thumbs up. Okay, so if you're not able to follow, right? Uh, if you want me to explain this part again, uh, uh, you can give me a thumbs up. Yeah, if you want me to explain this part again, you can give me a thumbs up. You can copy the code in the meantime. Okay, so let me explain this part again. Okay. Yeah. So actually, the thing is, right? We are actually using the same principle as like, uh, everything that we learned in the, the in the first first three. Um, examples 
just that we're combining everything together. Okay, so let me just explain everything. Okay, so let's start off with the state. So basically, at the start, we have my graph fruits as the default state. Okay, and then the items is the state, right? In the state. Okay, so we pass the items as the as the prop argument to color list. So whatever is inside items will be rendered out in the color list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So next, right, is the more confusing part, right? So the next thing that we do is, uh, the next thing that we do is we have a prop called on item click. Okay. So just now we are passing the items into on item click. I mean, into I, but sorry, we are passing the items into the items prop. Now we are passing a function into the on item click prop. Okay, this is like, yeah, so we are passing a function into the on item click prop. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that, right, the on item click prop, right, will contain this particular function. Okay. Yeah. So basically, the on item key prop will contain this uh, function. Yeah. So basically, if you can, let's just copy paste this, right? So that you can, uh, you can reference it on top, right? So on item click right now will be equal to this function. Yeah, because we pass the function as the prop to on item click. Okay. Okay, so now what happens, right, is within the list, right, we say when you click the list, right, what we'll do is we'll call the on item click function with the item name. Okay. So we'll call the on item click function with the item name. So basically, uh, yeah. So basically, when you click on click, we'll call on item click function with item name. So you can see this function, right? We pass in the item name inside this on item click. Yeah. So what happens is when you click the list item, the item name will be passed into the on item click function, and then the on item click function will get triggered, right? So it will take in the item name and then it will check uh, which items does not match the name. And then it will return all the items that does not match the name. And then it will call set items, which will set the items in state to the filtered items. And then the filtered items will be rendered out in the color list. Yeah. So that's how it works. So that's why when you click, right, the stuff will disappear. Let's refresh again. Okay. Uh, who is able to follow up until now? Uh, you can give me a thumbs up. Like if you're not able to follow this, uh, okay, nice, nice. Actually, someone is able to follow. Great. Yeah. If you if you're unable to like wrap your head around this, right? Uh, you could, uh, go back and, oops, oops, oops. Yeah. If you if you're not able to wrap your head around this, uh, you could. Go back and uh just go to my editor and like play around yourself. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh I'm doing now, right? Uh if you are able to uh understand this, you can just copy the oh sorry, if you're not able to understand this or like you're not following, right? Just go back to my thing and uh copy the same copy the same um all the code and paste in your editor. Yeah. Okay. So now, right now, let's showcase like the advantage of doing it. Oh wait, you added. I cannot click the menu list. You can't click the menu list. You can't click. Yeah, you have to add the on item click over here. Actually, uh, we can do a, like a live debugging session if you want. Uh, Antoine, right? You want to, if you're okay, you want to share your screen, then we can 
Yeah, yeah, I think so I, I, yeah. I, I'm yeah, curious at what stage are you all on? Yeah, thank you. I, I think I will uh, add the... Yeah, okay, then you can one. let me know. La. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. we can just move ahead. Or, or if anyone wants to, wants me to do a debugging for you, I can do it. You can just raise your hand and I will debug for you. Okay, there's a question from Edric. So item.name will go through all the items, apple, orange, etc. Well, item name will stay the same in the filter. Huh. Okay, so fundamentally, right, you got to first understand how the functions work. So item name, right, it's just like the, it's just a fun function argument. Yeah. And then over here, right, you're just passing in the item name into item on item click as the argument. And then on item click, we'll receive the item name as the argument. And then, yeah, and then they will, you will use the item name to filter out the item that is removed. Yeah. Uh, if you don't understand, I think you can take a look at, this is basically the whole thing, right? It's just function composition. So uh, if you don't understand, you can take a look at the, uh, you can play around, you can play around uh, um, in your own free time. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so, so they're yeah, good. Uh, if you want me to continue explaining this, uh, you could give me a what do you call it? What reaction do you have actually? Oh, I can't give reactions. Okay, so if you want me to continue explaining this, uh, you could give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want me to move along, you could give me a tick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, can everyone give a reaction? Thank you. Okay, uh, can, yeah, can we have more like um, votes, uh, thumbs up for continue with the explanation for this? And okay, okay, okay. So let me give you a more comprehensive explanation, okay? So actually, right, this React thing, right, is more or less the same as it's just JavaScript, but but like uh slightly more like for different syntax, yeah. So I think a good way to explain this is um maybe we can look into. Let me think about it. Maybe we can look into uh like JavaScript itself. Okay. Okay, so basically, right, you can imagine, right, uh, color list as a function, right? So it's basically like a higher order function that takes in another function. So it takes in a function called for an item click, right? And then what it does is uh, it will basically have a, it has a list of items. Okay, let's do like item. Yeah, you have a list of items and then the items will be met. Uh, and then it will return. Uh, let me think about it. Uh, return. Uh, uh, yeah, it returns a function. Uh, this might be a bit more confusing, but this is like fundamentally how it works in the React. Uh. So <clears throat> what it does is it will return a function whereby the... Uh, this is actually a bit hard to explain. Hmm. Let me think about it. Uh. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I know what it is. Okay, so it will basically return a function, right, that calls on item click the item dot name. Yeah, something like this. Uh, so basically, this is a bit of an advanced concept, lah, but you need to understand like how higher order functions work. So basically, what we do here, right, is it's the same idea. Lah. Like we have a function called color list, and then we accept an argument called uh, on an item click, which is itself a function. Then we map out the item, and then in the item, right, we call on item click. 
which is what we are doing here. Yeah. So this is the thing that you uh, have to understand. Lah. So actually, right, uh, in the interest of time, right, let's let's um let's let's uh maybe I'll point you to a link for higher order functions in JavaScript. JavaScript higher order function. Higher order function. Okay, let's move it. Oh, okay. I can't even remember. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, not this one. It's too high order. Yeah, I'll point you to a link for JavaScript higher order function. Ah yeah, this one is good. Okay, you can you can take in you can check out this link la. I think let me just add into the notion, then you can check it out yourself. But I think this is like a non-trivial thing to explain. So uh basically uh accepting a function as uh, yeah. So actually this this concept is a bit more high level, but I think it's quite important because it's a very common pattern you see in React. So that's why like you need to understand like how JavaScript uh function composition works. Yeah. Or another way, right, is you can you can you can just just follow uh, like sometimes right you don't actually have to know how it works. Like, just follow the conventions and then like eventually you'll understand it. Yeah. Okay. So map will return the same number of elements while Twitter and like map replies same as you how Twitter replies. Yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, thank you, Renzia and Aldrich. Yeah. Okay, so basically, we are at this. Okay, where is it? Oh, this one, this one. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we are at this part, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah, so this one, right? Uh, it's just a common pattern that we use uh, function composition in React. Yeah, so, so, so this one is like, you just gotta. Uh okay, maybe what about I, I do like something else? Then I can I'll show you why this is this this is quite important. So okay, let's say we have this mango skin flag, right? Or this fruit flag, right? Let's say you want to do something else, which is like um let me think about it. We want to have another list of items, right? So now we have the fruits. Now we want to have another list of items. Uh, let's say like uh, what other things have colors? Uh, I didn't have color. Uh, I mean, okay. Oh no, no, not fruits, not fruits. Other than fruits. Oh, oh let's talk about animals, uh, Animals. Okay, okay, animals. Okay, so 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 like uh animals, right? So set animals. Okay. So uh let's say you want to have another list of this disappearing list, right? Let's say like some other component you want to use the same logic, right? Uh you don't have to rewrite the whole thing again. Instead you can just uh reuse, right? So uh let's Hey, let's just move the my favorite fruit down so you can see. Okay, move it down here. Let's move it down. Let's move it down. Uh, let's move this also. This one is a bit. Let's put it at the corner. Okay, so so now we have this. Now we want to uh, render animals. My favorite animals. Let's create also my favorite animals. Uh, favorite animals. So uh what are my favorite animals? I like cats. Uh. Cats can be brown. Okay, this is not really okay, elephants. Elephants are definitely gray. Gray. What do we have? Uh we have uh what, what's like thingy colorful? Oh caterpillar might be green. Oh, caterpillar. Caterpie. Caterpie is the 
It's a Pokemon, right? Oh, oh Pokemon. My favorite Pokemon. Okay. Uh, Pikachu <laughs> is uh, yellow, right? Uh, uh, what else? My Squirtle is Pikachu. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's stick with three Pokemon. Uh. I, I cannot remember all the Pokemon. Okay, okay, so. Okay, so, so now, now we have the, my favorite Pokemons. And then let's change this to Pokemon. That Pokemon. You know what? Let's just change this name also. Okay, by the way, right, uh, you can right click, right, and rename symbol. When you do rename symbol, right, basically the entire, everything will be renamed. Lah. So I want to change this to fruits. And then this one to. Alright, so now the first one we are rendering the fruits, the second one we are we are gonna render the Pokemons. Okay, so my favorite Pokemon. Okay, so now you can see the advantage of this lah. So uh the advantage is basically right you don't have to create another component. You wanna do the same logic. Yeah. So let's say you have color list. Let's say we just put in, uh, you can just change this to Pokemons. And then Pokemons.Bigger. And then set Pokemons. CC5. Yeah. So now you see, right? It looks the same. Like, it, it's the same thing. Okay, you don't have to rewrite the entire component again. Yeah. Okay. So this is the advantage of having, like, a uh, Functional composition is you basically don't have to repeat yourself so many times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, now, now let's now we have like around like twenty minutes left, right? Okay. So let, let me. Uh, I think we are kind of like almost at uh uh sixty percent of all the features in React. Yeah. So the next one, let's let's learn about uh how to do uh importing of components and exporting of components. This one is actually really easy. Yeah, it's just to make your code more uh looks nicer. La. So you don't have like see right now we are like 1000, 100 plus lines, right? It's like a bit ugly. Let's push everything into their own files so that it looks nice. Yeah. Okay, so uh what are we gonna do? Okay, let me just say 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 say. Okay, so now now everyone uh, please copy my code. It's exactly the same. And then uh let's move on. Okay, so Let's create a folder in source called components. Okay, so uh, that's like kind of the typical name that people give to the components that are reused. So let's create a component called colorlist.jsx. Okay, so what we'll do now, <clears throat> now it's like really messy, right? We want to shift the color list into the color list component. So let's shift it. So command C, command V. Okay. So now we declare it here. So what you have to do if you want to use it elsewhere, right? Yeah. You want to use it elsewhere. You have to export it. So the way to export it is to uh, export default color list. So this just means that when you import, right, you can just do like a import color list. From color list. Oh, if you do like, you could also explore it differently because you can explore it like this. Okay. Well, I guess you can explore it like this, right? You can explore it like this. So, but what have happened for the this example, right? Is that it will be import color list from external dot slash. So if you are exporting only like one component, you can use the default export. That's the convention. If you are exporting multiple components, right, you can do the like this. You can then you can export multiple things. Like, you can export like, like this. Then you can import, you can export multiple things. Yeah. Okay, so let's export the function the color list as a default uh, export. 
So, okay, actually just now I, I did like export default at the bottom, right? You could also just do it like this. So this will do a default export for the color list. Yeah. Okay, let's just do it this way so it's like less code, right? Okay. Yeah, so so like uh this one is just a convention, uh, it's just a syntax thing. So you don't really have to know like why is it like this. Like if you just like this, it just works like this. So if you want to do create your own component, you just copy the same thing, and then you uh yeah, then you use this syntax. Yeah. Okay, now so now let's import it. Oh shoot. Okay, let's let's import it, okay? So let's import that component. Uh yeah, let's remove this. Okay, now we remove this, uh, our thing will have a major error. Just bug out. Okay, let's just import it. Yeah, remove it. So import color list from uh dot slash components. So I'm I'm using like relative uh imports. Lah. So it will be relative from my current file components slash color list. Yeah, so now it works. So you realize when you import stuff with uh, in React, right? You don't have to include the file extension. It will automatically uh, detect the file extension. Yeah. Actually, let me try whether Absolute imports it. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, never mind. Okay, yeah. So you 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 work like this, uh, okay. So one more thing is you, you you can take note, right? Is that actually like importing and exporting of stuff, right? If you have to type it out yourself, right? It's quite a pain, uh. So actually, most editors support auto import. So let's say we remove this. I'm not sure whether this editor does or not, because it's a web editor, but I assume it should. So let's see. Uh, uh wait. Oh, it doesn't. Uh let's see whether it also is for. Oh sorry, so I think this editor doesn't really support auto import out of the box. So yeah, you're going to import manually. But if you're using your, your local editor, right, it should work. So like, usually my flow is, right, I I don't really care about the import. I just code. And then when I type things out, right, it automatically, it automatically like, show. Yeah, actually, let me just double check again. Let me just check. Uh. Maybe it was like bugging a bit. Oh yeah, 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 it auto imports. So so I think right, you just have to start typing, and then it will, it will auto import. So like you see right, like color list. Then I just click tab. Then the color list will be imported automatically. So let me demo again. So, uh, this is the same editor. So let me just demo. So I do color list. Then I click tab. Then it automatically import. Yeah. So this is a very good thing about, uh, the great editor support for React. Yeah. Way easier than like many other programming uh frameworks where the editor support is not so ideal. Yeah. Okay, so so now we have the auto import setup. I mean we have the refactoring into the file setup. So let's let's just do the same thing. Let's just move all our our stuff right into their own dedicated file. Uh, I think there should be a way to do it very quickly. Let me see. Uh, oh, there's no refactor. Okay. Okay. So so yeah. So let's move it to the dedicated file. So this one, let's just do it. Okay. So let's uh mood dot js add. Okay. And then we move the mood into the mood thing. Okay. And then we save. And then uh you can remove this. And then uh now it is buggy again, right? So we just start typing and you know we tap it, then it will be automatically imported. And then you'll be out. Yeah. So that's how it works. Lah. So you can do the rest of the things on your own. Uh and then the auto imports will it just work, yeah. Okay, let me just shift these comments over to, to the color list file so that when you are referencing it on your own, you can 
can reference it easily. Yeah. Okay, so this is how it works. Uh, I think I shouldn't like bombard you with more reacts. Uh. There's like still like 20% of react left that we haven't gone through. Uh, actually, do you all want to learn the 20%? Then we can be 100% done with react. Yeah. Oh yeah, so the twenty so there's a question, right? What is the twenty percent? So the twenty percent left is a uh, use effect. So use effect is basically a React hook that uh changes based on the certain component. Yeah. So okay, what about we just do that too? Uh, but it will be a bit it might be a bit confusing, lah. So uh, if you don't understand within this like lesson, right? Is Okay, but I will say the most important thing is really the function composition. If you understand that, right, uh, you, you kind of understand most of React. Yeah. So maybe let's just do the, for curiosity's sake, let's just do the use effect. Let me just do a demo for use effect. Yeah, you, you might not be able to follow it, but you can check it out uh, when you are back, when you have time when you're back home. I mean, you're already at home, but yeah, when you, after this class. Okay, let's do a, a new component called effect. Use effect demo. Oh, wait, demo use effect. Demo use effect. Dot JSX. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then let's just create the component. Okay, now we have this, right? Okay, let's 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 import the demo use effect somewhere. Okay, so let's import demo use effect. Yeah, uh, I hope everyone still can follow. Uh, it's a bit hard to follow, uh, but just it's a bit hard to go through everything in such a short class. Uh, but but let's try. Yeah, let me see. Okay, so uh, please just copy my editor stuff, and then uh, check it out. So now we have the, yeah, the demo use effect imported as a component at the bottom. So if we, let me go to the, it's really like here. Yeah, it's laggy, sorry, yeah. it's laggy. Very, very laggy. Okay, this is like a slow motion. You can just see it. Uh, so we basically create a demo use effect in the components and then we are uh, importing it in the app.jsx. Yeah. Very like very, very like. Uh okay, so yeah, finally the zoom finally has rendered finished. Okay, so now we have the demo use effect. So what let me just show you a example of how use effect works, okay? Uh let me think about it. Let me think about it. Uh hmm. Okay, what well, about let's create a button. Yeah. Then I'll show you how you use effect works. Okay, so you really use we use use effect right to do API calls. That means we are like calling some other uh some other like network for network information. Yeah. So uh yeah. Let me check is there any like demo demo API. Uh, okay, like, actually, like let's not do this. Uh, this is a bit too advanced. Okay, so 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 let let let's let's do let's say okay. Usually we do it in the API calls, lah. But uh, in this scenario, we don't really have the API set up, so I think it's alright. 
But let's just, all right, um, let me just give you a quick demo of how you use the text. So let's say, right, we want to like create an alert when you render this page. Okay, let's, let's return something here also so that we can see it. Uh, I, I, let's just call it, I like this lesson. I love React. I love React, okay? So you can see that I love React at the bottom. Yeah. So when you render this component, right, we want to send an alert. So you can say, hello. Oh, whoops, it's too fast. It's saving too fast, okay? Okay, okay, yeah. Now, now you can see there's an alert. La. Basically, when this component renders, there will be an alert. Yeah. Actually, this is a bit annoying. La. Let's remove the alert. Because it's like blocking everything. Okay, so so basically in the use effect, right, we can like uh do something. Yeah. And so the use effect has this uh has this um syntax. The first one is the function. The function is what you want to do. And then the array, right, is uh it controls when this function is triggered. Okay. So by default, right, you have nothing in the array, you will trigger the first time in the component render. So the use effect will render on the first time. Yeah, when you, it will trigger when the component loads, yeah. And then it will be triggered again, right? If let's say the, any of the things in the item changes. So let's say we have like, uh, yeah, like I think not everyone might be following now, but like uh, just, uh, let me just give a quick demo, la, just so that you can, figure out it out when you're back home. So let's say uh, at this use state uh you know that? name so now now we have the name that's inside the use state right okay why is this not reloading it? Very weird. Why is it not loading? Oh, I know we put okay, sorry about that. Use state. Yeah. Uh at the start maybe is uh I love react. Okay. Okay, let's see how use effect works. Okay. Okay, let's pass in the name in the use effect. Okay. So if you look at the bottom part, oops, so let's do a console.log. Name. Okay, like, you know what? Okay, let me just remove this first. Later, I'll show you the alert. So, on click, right, we want to set it to a new name. Uh, I love you. Okay. So on click, this will be changed to view. I love you. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to do is also right. You want to alert the whatever name that is given whenever the name changes. So what happens is when it first render, it will show I love you, right? Right. Because use effect get triggered when it first render. Then when you click again, right, the name will change. The name change and then the, therefore the function will be called. That's why you alert. I love you. Yeah. So that's how it works. La. So uh to see this in more like detail, right? Because theoretically you could just uh use the same function to set name, right? But in this case, let's say we have another another div, right? Uh I love this one is I love chickens. La. Yeah. Then the alert will, will be triggered correspondingly. I did not open that. Uh, oh, okay. This is okay. Yeah, so let's save and uh, format. Okay. Okay, this thing is a bit okay, angry. Okay, so 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 now now we have this. Let's let me see. Load right. So when it starts, when it starts right, use effect will be triggered, and we and it will uh, render the name, which is 
uh, I love UX. Okay. Okay, and then when we click uh the bottom one, right, we will ch change the name to I love chickens. Therefore, the use effect will be triggered because the name got changed. Yeah, I love chickens. And then if you click the top one, uh, it will change the name to I love view. So the use effect will be triggered again because the name changed again. Yeah, so now it's I love view. So usually people do this to like uh, to subscribe to APIs. Uh. Like let's say when you click this, right, you want to fetch another, uh, fetch another data. Let's say when you click the user profile, which is like, user x, then you want to fetch a user x data. Then uh, we can call it a use effect. Okay, so that's, that's it for today. Uh, let me save and uh, share this link over in my Notion document. So you can go back home and, oops. Lesson notes and code. Yeah, so when, when, when you all can go, just go back and like check out the this tech tips and uh, check it out. Oh, and actually, right, if actually my, my, my if, let's say you find that my, uh, my, my uh, teaching is not so good, right? You could just go to the React uh, doc, learn React uh, doc, and just follow this tutorial. It's exactly the same as what I, what I taught. Uh. Yeah. So you can just go over here and just follow through. It's actually pretty easy to follow. You can just check it out. And if you want to learn more, you can like follow it, learn it here also. Yeah. So just go here, the reference, and check out this. Then you can run your own project in Stackblitz. If you want to run it locally, there's also like a, a setup installation here. Yeah, where you can learn on your own. I, I highly recommend just following this tutorial. It, definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And uh, uh, remember to give the feedback in the chat. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, this is the, oopsie. Yeah, I go to tinyrealm.com slash hs to, to reference the, reference the lesson notes. Okay, thank you.